Eva Aji, who is the investment advisor at Gerber Kawasaki. Eva, great to have you here with us this morning. Uh, what, from your perspective, is currently driving the markets and pushing us to some of the new record highs that we've seen most recently? Well, first of all, Brad, thank you so much for having me. I think overall what's pushing markets right now is a very emotional response to anything Jay Powell says. More than that, we're looking at earnings that have been at record highs for a lot of the tech and growth companies that we're looking at. But uh, to my last point, anytime there's some point of news, we're expecting a little bit of volatility here. Certainly. Okay. And so where do you continue to look for investment opportunities even in this market? So we look at the areas where you can benefit from a bottleneck in this transitory period. Mm. Number one being home builders. So there's a huge amount of demand there, looking at companies like Lennar that capitalize on that growth. In addition to that, we're also looking to the hybrid work from home and also work from the office place. So companies like Logitech that benefit from that and also the semiconductor industry. There's a huge shortage in chips right now and we're looking to uh, see companies like ASML that actually creates the machines that create chips do better moving forward. We were taking a look at the NASDAQ a moment ago, uh, of course, with some of the new record highs that we've been watching, the tech-heavy average has been in focus, but also as big tech has been in focus on Capitol Hill, which is not necessarily the place that you want to be in focus at. Um, the House set to debate proposed antitrust legislation, we do know. Uh, what's your outlook for the tech sector right now? You know, it's really, it's really tough to say. Overall, bills have been proposed before. Uh, ultimately, what Congress needs to come up with is a proposal that says that big tech is hurting consumers and is really engaging in anti-competitive practices. And until they show material pain on consumers, uh, it's likely that it's just going to be a fine and continuing on to the next. So we're, we're looking forward to see what happens here. But ultimately, creating a more competitive space for businesses to thrive is going to be the most important. It's so interesting, the timing of this all, because it comes at a time where consumers perhaps are keeping their eyes on some of the deals that a company in Amazon had been putting out through its Prime Day and Prime Days, I should say. I got to remember the S on the end of it. It's not just one day anymore. And so all of that right. considered, there are still so many third party sellers, third party businesses that rely on all of these big tech platforms. And so how do you how do you surmise that Congress may continue to make sure that there is an environment where third party Parties who are leveraging these platforms can continue to find success um, and how does that change the revenue structure the models that all of these companies have been able to benefit from whether they be solely on the digital advertising front or whether that's on the e-commerce front so for companies like Amazon where third-party sellers are able to sell they can obviously enforce something in the nearer term I know that Google just came out with something in Europe that has like a three three-year timeline there uh, as far as Amazon it'll probably look roughly similar so you have a legislation that's put in place to make sure that uh, competitive practices are able to thrive in the next couple of years but further than that it's really up to them to make uh, changes within their company's uh, competitive practices. Certainly. Want to bring this conversation circular. We'll end things where we started off. Yesterday, we heard commentary from Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell, um, and he eased concerns over interest rates, expects supply chain concerns and shortages to ease up over time, bringing inflation closer to the Fed's near-term predictions. Uh, you know, the, the net takeaways from yesterday, what were they from your perspective? And, you know, going forward from here, what are some of the timelines that you're watching as it comes to the Fed? Yeah, it wasn't anything that we were surprised by. Powell has said time and time again that inflation will be transitory. There are a lot of deflationary pressures here, and it's just a reopening uh, side effect, so to speak. When you have an economy that was closed for a year and a half, it's not it's not uh, crazy to propose that prices in things like restaurants and production and supply bottlenecks will happen. That'll drive the price up momentarily. But longer term, exactly with what Powell said, we'll see that start to drop down as time goes on. And then just lastly here, uh, of course, it does come at a time where we know going into the summer months, the White House had their target of getting 70 percent of Americans vaccinated or, um, you know, some of the more lofty goals, making sure that we were able to going into the July 4th holiday weekend hit certain thresholds. And it seems like we're going to be behind that by just a couple of weeks. Um, so with this in mind, even as we are 
seeing a more targeted approach uh, for the vaccination campaign towards those who have been hesitant or have just flat out refused to get the vaccine. You know, what is it going to take for kind of the economic recovery to continue the steam that we have seen when we do have kind of the vaccination hesitancy that there has been um, and what what may work out uh, kind of in this near term to make sure that this reopening does not stall? Right. So you're never going to get the entire population to be vaccinated or to agree on one thing in general. What we can hope for is that we get to that 70 percent threshold and we have some kind of herd immunity. When that occurs, reopening will have a progressive uh, steam, as you said before, um, and people will continue to go out in areas where COVID rates might be a little bit higher. Overall, I see this as uh, something that the entire nation needs to come to together that will involve about 70 percent or, or, or more of the population at least getting herd immunity through COVID exposure or vaccinations as well. Eva, I see you're in Los Angeles, California. I, I was never amazing at math, but I believe it's about 4.39 a.m. there. So thank you so much for joining it us. Is early, early in the morning out there on the West Coast. Eva Aji, who is the investment advisor over at Gerber Kawasaki. Appreciate the time.